I'm going to share with you my predictions for Park City Real Estate in 2019. But before I do, let me give you a quick overview of the Park City real estate market. Over the past year, there's been 1,271 sales. That consists of homes, condominiums, and vacant land. And that is down by 9% or 132 sales from the year before. This graph here shows us in red the period of time from January through December of 2018, whereas the silver bars represent the 12-month period the year before. Here you can see that the number of home sales is down by 9%, dropping from 568 to 516. Condos are down by 11%, dropping from 656 to 584, and a 4% drop among the lots. Zeroing in a little closer to homes, we're looking at, in Park City, a 10% decrease, 157 sales this past year compared to 175 the year before. In the Snyderville Basin, a drop of 9% from 383 sales to 359. So clearly fewer home sales. Now we're looking at condominiums. Again, a 9% decline in the Park City limits, dropping to 316 from 346 the year before, and a 14% decrease condo sales in the Snyderville Basin, dropping from 310 to 268 sales. Here we're looking at vacant land, and we're actually up by five sales in the city limits, but in the Snyderville Basin, again, an 8% decrease from 155 sales to most recently 142. What this tells us is that the number of sales in most categories are dropping. Now, what's happening with prices? Good news is prices are continuing to go up. In fact, going up very, very well. Here we're looking at home medium sold prices, again, looking at Park City or the Snyderville Basin, a nice 10% appreciation year over year in Park City, climbing from 1,900,000 all the way to 2,085,500. In the Snyderville Basin, double it, 20% appreciation, climbing from 1,022,000 as a median price all the way up to 1,230,000. Condominiums, impressive again, Park City limits, 24% appreciation climbing to 886,250 from the previous year, 717,000. 9% in the Snyderville Basin, breaking the 500,000 mark, climbing all the way up to 545,000. And then looking at vacant land, city limits, 26% appreciation. 820,000 was the previous medium sold price, all the way up to 1,035,000. Now do keep in mind, in the city limits, there's not a lot of lot sales, so this is a small sampling, and so that can skew this data. Larger sampling in the Snyderville Basin reflects a 16% appreciation with the uh, price rising from 425000 to just under 500000 at 493000 Now let's take a look at how quickly properties are selling. Home sales in Park City are selling on average 113 days. Now some sell faster, some take longer to sell, but that is the average of the homes that sell. Of the homes that are on the market but have not sold, the average time on the market is 237 days. That's more than double the length of time of the properties that have sold. That just tells you that if you overprice a property, it's going to sit on the market at least twice as long and still without selling. So what does all this mean? It tells us what the market is doing, and that is sold prices are going up, great appreciation, double digits in almost every category, but the number of sales are clearly dropping down. Buyers are keen, they understand what's going on. Buyers are purchasing correctly priced properties, they're not wasting their time on overpriced properties, and as a result we're seeing the days on the market increasing. I want to share my predictions for the Park City real estate market in 2019. Now I'll do this by first responding to several commonly asked questions and then I'll identify several factors, I like to call them wild cards, which are outside factors that may influence Park City's real estate market in the new year. So let's begin with the questions. What is your overall outlook for the Park City real estate market? Well, let me just say that the Park City real estate market is strong, but is definitely going through certain changes. The demand to live in Park City remains strong, and I expect that will continue through the new year in 2019. But we will also expect to see continued firm position that buyers are taking 
resisting purchasing overpriced listings. This is going to lead to a separation between those who list and those who want to sell. Listers don't need to sell their properties. They can put them on the market, see if anyone's interested in paying their price, and then decide whether they sell or not. Usually we see these listers among the high end of the market, usually above the two million price point. To differentiate, sellers adjust their price to the market in order to sell now. It's not that they don't want to get the highest possible price. They, of course, do, but they're realistic. They'll look at what has sold. They'll look at reasonable prices, and they'll sell for that price. And statistically, as I've already shown with my overview of the market, those prices continue to rise. What will be the hottest properties in 2019? Well, single-family homes will leave that list, and single-family homes are divided into two categories. There are primary residences, and then there are second homes. In addition to that, there is the new developments or newer homes category, if you will. These are new homes that are competition for the new buyer. <clears throat> they are competition for older homes, and they will have a great impact upon the future in 2019. Single-family neighborhoods will be the strongest market segment with the greatest demand from buyers. Second homes and investment properties will follow second with a strong marketplace when priced properly and reasonably. Where do you see property values going in 2019? Well, homes under the $2 million price point will continue to appreciate, although maybe a little bit less than we saw in 2018, I'm suggesting somewhere between 8% and 15%, still very favorable appreciation. Sellers of high-priced homes will start to lower their price, their list prices, because they're not selling at those higher prices, and they'll be seeking to find that range, and once they find the range, they'll sell their property. Newer homes and condos will be competition for older properties, and that's an important consideration if you're a property owner trying to sell an older property that maybe hasn't been upgraded to match today's preferred standards. New homes will set new record high prices for solds. Older properties will, if they have not been remodeled, will need to either be upgraded or be discounted as much as 15 or 20 percent lower than the new properties in order to sell in the new year. New homes and new condo sales would lead the way in 2019 simply because many buyers prefer to purchase a new property. These new properties will be competition for the older ones, so the older ones, as I said, where they need to upgrade or be discounted in order to sell in 2019. Will the time that it takes to sell properties change in 2019? Correctly priced properties will sell at about the same pace that they did in 2018, say in 113 days or less. Now do keep in mind that that's 20% longer than it was during the first half of 2018. So we saw that slowdown when sellers tried to get too high of a price. Overpriced properties will not sell. The market has spoken clearly on this. Buyers are refusing to pay roughly 10% or more over a recent comparable sale. What impact will higher interest rates have in 2019? We do expect to see interest rates continue to climb in the new year. Historically, rising interest rates have actually had little or no impact on Park City sales, and perhaps that's because approximately 50% of all sales are cash. Now let me turn our attention to the wild cards. These wild cards are important and these are factors that occur outside the Park City marketplace itself but may have an impact on the Park City real estate market. Wild card number one is the government shutdown. Well we're into January and the shutdown is still underway and we hope that that's going to be solved and resolved to everyone's satisfaction and get on with life but it creates uncertainty and that uncertainty finds its way even to Park City. Next there is the U.S. real estate forecast for 2019. Now realize that there's no such thing as a U.S. real estate market. All real estate markets are local, just like weather. There's no such thing as a single national weather forecast. There's no such thing as a single national real estate forecast. It's all a local event, so you have to look at it within the individual setting. However, you do hear enough news about the U.S. economy and the national real estate outlook that it impacts uh, people's view of real estate in local 
neighborhoods, including Park City. So broad sweeping statements that may be negative may influence the mind of someone who's looking at real estate in a local market, whether it's Park City or anywhere in the country. Ultimately, that can impact inventories rising, and we expect that the inventories will rise to about 2017 levels. Thirdly, nationally, the outlook is that mortgage rates will continue to rise, and while that doesn't have as great of an impact in the Park City marketplace, it will influence people's ability to buy elsewhere across the country and impact their attitude toward buying in Park City as well. <clears throat> Finally, speculative investors and house flippers will tend to back away from the cooling market. They don't want to take the risk, and as a result, there are fewer buyers, and that influences the marketplace. The question we've got to ask is, will the U.S. real estate worldview reach Park City? That's the wild card. Wild card number two, Donald. We, for the first time ever, have a tweeting president. We're very familiar with his tweets. They stretch the imagination at time, and I've just grabbed a couple because they're a little bit they're relevant at this point in time. Tweet number one. This one goes back to uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve, 2016. Happy New Year to all, Donald says, including to my many enemies and those who have fought me and lost so badly. They just don't know what to do. Love. Tweet number two. After having written many best-selling books and somewhat priding myself on my ability to write, uh, it should be noted that the fake news constantly likes to pour over my tweets looking for a mistake. I capitalize certain words only for emphasis, not because they should be capitalized. That one's interesting in light of this next one. This next tweet goes back to pre-presidential days when Barack Obama was our president, Donald Trump wasn't yet. If Dow Jones, Jones, ever falls more than a thousand points in a single day, the sitting president should be loaded into a very big cannon and shot into the sun at tremendous speed. No excuses. But that relates to our wild card number four, the Dow Jones plunge. As you know, at the end of 2018, the market plunged more than a thousand points. This creates, of course, economic uncertainty, certainly talk about the recession and just not good news. And when you have that lack of stability and lack of confidence, it impacts real estate across the country, including Park City. Wild card number five, well, a lot of big money was lost in the recent stock market decline. And when there's less money available to invest in real estate, that includes Park City. So these are my wild cards and harder to be able to predict what impact they'll have on the Park City market. But having been in Park City for over 30 years, I know they will have an impact. Well, there you have it. Those are my predictions for Park City real estate in 2019. As always, time will tell how accurate I was. But if you'd like to talk about this stuff or have some thoughts, questions you wish to share, please don't hesitate to give me a call. I like to talk about this stuff and consider it tend to be analytical in that way. You can shoot me an email at ron at team.com. Include your phone number. I'm happy to reach out to you at a preferred time. But that's, uh, that's my thoughts going into the new year.